Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is Tinker77, and we are on a very, very blank world. It's not really a redstone testing world. It's something a little bit different. It's just flat. Anyway, what we're going to work on today is I'm going to talk about something that has to do with computers and how they work, and we're going to kind of use Minecraft to kind of explain that. So we're going to talk about logic gates, and there are quite a few logic gates. This is how uh, digital computers work. Every computer today works in this kind of like the same way. And so we're going to talk about these logic gates, and we're going to do that from within Minecraft. Let's get started. The first thing we have to understand with computers is how does it recognize or represent information? And computers work in binary, which is either on or off or zero or a one. So in this case, we can see we have this lever here. The redstone circuit is off and the lamp is off. This lamp represents internally in a computer as a zero. And when the signal is on, it represents a one. So if we have a signal, if we have a light, it's a one. If it's off, it's a zero. Now that's how we represent logic inside of a computer, but how do we make decisions? And that's where the logic gates come in. Perhaps the simplest logic gate is the inverter, which inverts the signal. So as you can see here, we have no redstone signal, but placing a block with a redstone torch on the side inverts the signal, so this is now on. So we have off over here, but on over here, or a one. Now when we do the lever, you can see it turned that off. So this is on and that's off. So in essence, this is inverting the signal that you have here. Whatever the redstone is here, it's the opposite over here. And this is really one of the most simple gates. Today's computers use something called a transistor, which is internally is really like a switch, which allows current to flow through them or not, depending on a signal that comes in. And these things are very tiny and they've revolutionized computers to a point now that we can have computers just about anywhere and in anything and they're very tiny. So how does it work? Basically, like I said, it is a switch. So you can see here this redstone block is trying to power this through this repeater, but there's nothing here in this spot, right? Right here, okay? And so there's no signal that goes through. And it, what it does is, though, if you have a transistor and you have an internal switch, something happens, and then the power goes through. So that's the basics of a transistor, and this is used in pretty much every logic gate and everything that works on a computer. So we're gonna start right next with making a our first true logic gate. The first logic gate is the AND gate, and what this does is there are two inputs here. You have the yellow inside and the orange side, and both these are off right now, but the way AND works, it says that if this and this are on, then this should be on. Otherwise, doesn't matter, this should not. So you can see here, if I flip this lever, that doesn't turn on. If I flip this lever, that still doesn't turn on. But if both of these are on, then the lamp comes on. So this is AND gate. If this AND, this, and this together, you get this signal. That's one of the first gates that we're going to work with. Let's go try to find another one. The next gate we're going to talk about is the OR gate. And what this says is that if either signal is on, the lamp should be on. So or this or this, right? So you can see the yellow is off and the lamp is off. And if I engage this, the lamp turns on and now it's off. We can try it the other side. It should do exactly the same thing. It's on or it's off. So if either one of these are on, it should be on. Let's see, try doing both and you can see that it's on. So that is the, basically how a OR gate works. Now, something to note here about how these are set up. If you look at this, this is the AND gate we did just previously, and you can see that they are in a series. One has to go through one, and one has to go through the other, Whereas, and that's the AND gate, whereas this side here is the OR gate, and it is in parallel. That's something that's very uh, distinct about these two gates. They're very similar. They take two of these uh, switches or these pistons, which we call transistors and computers, but to how they're oriented changes the way the function happens. Coming back to the AND gate, there is a way to make another gate very simply, which is inverting the signal of the AND gate, and then it's called a NAND gate, N-A-N-D. So if you can imagine this is on because both of these are on right here, but if you replace this block and we add our inverter, which we talked about at the beginning of this episode here, you can see that now this is off. So now this will be on in any case, except for when they are both there. See, I can do anything I want here, but when I turn on both, it turns off the signal over here. So this is a inverted AND gate or a NAND gate. You can do the same thing with the OR gate as well, and I've done that here. You can see I have the inverter portion right there. So if either of these are on, it turns that off. So this is an OR gate, which they call a NOR gate, N-O-R. 
NOR gate. So right there, we've done two more gates just by adding an inverter. So the next thing we're going to work on is going to be a fun one. It's called the XOR gate. Before I get into showing the XOR gate, I wanted to show you that I've tied these two gates that we made together. I am still going to be using the NAND gate, which is the inverted AND, and you can see that right now it's on because we don't have both the yellow and orange signals on, right? AND would be both, but it's not that, so that's uh, why that's on. The other side here, I've converted it over to the OR gate instead of the uh, NOR gate. And that's so that we can use this because I'm going to be using both of these for the XOR. And you can see I tied together the, the inputs for both of these gates. The yellow gate is our yellow uh, signal is tied to both and the orange goes all the way around. OK, so if we look here, you can see they activate together. So uh, or is not on and the NAND gate is on. If I hit the orange, you can see this turned on, but this one didn't change. And I'm going to do this one here, and you can see that it does change that one. So these two gates are working together. And we're going to be using the NAND gate and the OR gate together to make the XOR gate. So how do you get an XOR gate or exclusive OR? Well, you take the NAND gate and you take the OR gate and you put them into a regular AND gate, which is I have over here. So you can see the two signals are on or off, there's one on and one off, I mean. And uh, what this does is exclusive OR says that if both inputs are off, then the signal should be off. If both inputs are on, the signal should be off. But if they are different, then the signal should be on. So you can see here, this is the output signal, this lamp, and you can see both of these are, are off right now. And if I flip one lever, the lamp comes on. If I flip the other lever, so now they would both be on, that should be, then be off, and it is. And if I have this one off and one is on, it's that way again. So you can see that that's what that exclusive OR means. And of course, you can add the inverter just like we did to the AND and the OR gates. And that way you have a, it's, I can't even pronounce it, but it's a inverted XOR gate, or it's, I think it's abbreviated NXOR. So that's what that is. So you can see we have seven different gates we've used. We have the inverter, which we've added to all of these. We had the AND gate and the OR gate and the inverted for versions of those, which are the NAND gate and the NOR gate. And then those two combined to make the exclusive OR gate, the XOR gate. And then we inverted that to make the and XOR gate. I know I put a lot of information in here about logic gates and how they kind of work, and it looks like it's a little bit of a mess, but it's really not. It makes sense when you really get down to it. Now, I suggest that uh, if you want to learn more, that you go out to, into uh, the internet, you go find some information on uh, these type of gates. Each gate has what they call a truth table, which basically says if something is on or off, what would the result be? And so you can look at that, and you can try to test this out and see that it works. It works great. And with all of these various components of gates and other things, you can make amazing things inside of a computer. They have made things that make let you add numbers together. They have things that let you add and store data. Everything that's inside of a computer really is made from transistors. And these are the Minecraft equivalents of those transistors. Anyway, guys, I sure hope you liked this video. If you did, please click that like button. If you have any comments, put them down in the comment section. And if you'd like to be notified of the videos that I produce, please subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to hit that little bell icon so you get all notifications, okay? Thanks, guys, and have a great day. Bye-bye.